Okay, I'm going to be walking you through the setup of your Microsoft Exchange server account on your Android device. Uh, this particular device is a Samsung Galaxy Tab. Um, the setup will be very similar, if not the same, for the majority of the Samsung Galaxy family of devices, including the S3 and the S4 and whatever else they come out with. Um, it will also be very similar to most of the Android devices. Some of the terminology may be different, um, but it'll be very similar, and I'll discuss that further here shortly. Um, what you're going to look for first is the Settings app. Now, I have it on my home screen, uh, but you may not. In that case, you'll have to go to the All Apps, and you'll find it in your All Apps looking for the Settings. Okay, then scroll down through until you find Accounts. You're going to click Add Account. And here you're going to be presented with a list of options. Now we're looking for the Microsoft Exchange Active Sync option, and that will sync your phone or tablet with the Microsoft Exchange server. If you've got another Android device, you may have different terminology. It may say corporate email or corporate sync or Microsoft Exchange or something to that effect. But that will, that's what we're looking for here. Go ahead and push that. All right, and then you're going to be presented with the account setup. Here you're going to put in your email address that you are provided. I'll do that real quick. All right, and you're going to put in the password that is provided to you. This is obviously a test account. And if you have this option here, the second line down says send email from this account by default. If you have that, you're going to want to choose that. That means that you generally have uh, more than one email account already configured. Um, but you're going to want to set that, set that to send from default, uh, from this account by default. Then we're going to click next. Oops. All right. Now it's going to search for your server settings. Um, in this case, by design, it's going to fail. I want to show you what happens in the event that uh, your domain does not have an auto discover record created on the DNS. And a lot of a lot of times, that's the case, where sometimes they just don't function properly. So we're going to wait a few moments for that to time out. Okay, once that fails, you'll see that it failed to automatically get the server information. Go ahead and click Edit Details. And here you're going to put in your domain slash username. Uh, the domain will be provided by your system administrator, and you want to keep that slash there. Uh, the username will also be provided by your system admin. And in this case, our format is first initial last name. Uh, the password's already filled because we just did that in the previous step. And most cases here, um, you're just going to be adding something in front of the domain. Uh, in this case, like mail.brivix.com. That'll also be supplied by your administrator. Uh, in my case here, I've got a different mail server name. And be very careful typing in this information because one missed character or one incorrect character or added character is going to cause the whole setup to fail. And it can get very frustrating as you try to look through everything se several times. Now, once you have it completed, you're going to leave that box checked. We definitely want to use SSL here. And you're going to push next. And it's going to prompt you about an activation. And you can read through that if you'd like, but it, just pushing OK will move us along. And then it's going to look for the server that I just typed in. Hopefully it finds it here. This is a lot faster too if you're on Wi-Fi and if you have it or if you have a good signal, a good cell signal. You may find it failing if you don't have a very good cell cell phone signal. 
All right, so it found it, and it's going to tell you that the server name must be able to remote control some of the features on your device. Go ahead and push OK for that. That's just uh, some rules and, and uh, policies and so forth that are set forth by the Exchange admin. All right, and here you're going to choose what you want to sync, um, tasks, calendar, contacts, email, and some other options, and you can pretty much safely leave these as default. And push next. It's going to process here. It should give me one more warning about it wanting to have control. Yeah. There we go. We're going to activate. Okay, it looks like it's you can set some of your peak schedule and stuff there, but now it's going to ask you. It says it's complete, which this is a good good sign once we've gotten to this step. You can change the name of this if you'd like. Uh, most people just keep it the same. And push done. Take a few moments here to complete. But pretty much once you've reached this point, the setup is completed successfully. And you'll see the account now shows up in your list. And all you got to do is go to the home screen. And uh, everything should come in relatively soon, and you'll be able to use um, all of your email and contacts and tasks and calendar items using now using your Microsoft Exchange server. And you can hear the email coming in already.